Hi everyone, and welcome back to Octopus Builds, where we are building out the Trident project for the fictional company Octopet Shop. My name is Bob Walker, and today we're going to continue on our conversation about multi-tenancy. So if you didn't watch the previous episode, what we did was we made our Trident application multi-tenant. And we did that by adding in four tenants. We have an internal tenant, as well as three branches. In addition to that, we made a few other changes. Uh, we went over into the runbooks, and we updated this to support multi-tenancy. So now the runbook must run against a tenant. We also updated the deployment process to send that tenant in when we are calling out to that runbook, as you can see here. And we also updated our variables to use the short name of the tenant, which we set uh, at the tenant area, and I'll show you that in just a second, but we've updated this to leverage the short name of the tenant in our database name. And we're able to set that by going into the variables and then selecting common variables and then filling out retail location and then entering in the short name. So that's where we're at as of right now. Now, what I want to do is there are a few things that I think are a little inefficient in our overall deployment process. And I want to be able to make that improved by leveraging a few features of the multi-tenancy uh, feature itself so we can uh, make it a little bit easier to deploy, uh, not run steps when we don't need to run steps, and so on and so forth. So let's first jump in to our deployment process. And you'll notice that I have merged everything into the main branch. Um, so everything from, <laughs> at least for this, we're going to be creating a new branch. So let's go ahead and create a new branch. And I'm just going to call this uh, tenants. Create a branch from main. So now we can start making some changes. Because if you recall correctly, I have branch protection policies set up where I cannot make any changes to the deployment process without going through a pull request first. Alrighty, so let's make a couple of changes. And the first thing I want to do is I'm taking a look at this particular step. The auto approve database delta step, database delta script, as well as the approve delta script. Now this approve step will only run on staging. So that really means that this step only needs to run on staging. But having to approve every single database delta script, especially in, in a situation where we know there's going to be a lot of changes, that probably isn't as efficient as we hope it to be. So what we're going to want to do is we want to skip these particular steps unless we are going to be running for the internal application. Because generally the way that this works is, at least at Octopet Shop, um, after talking to the web admins, after talking to the, data, uh, the database developers, the developers and everything like that, they let me know that the plan is they want to deploy the internal application, excuse me, the internal tenant probably a day or two before they start rolling it out to all of the other branches. And that, that makes a lot of sense um, because you want to make sure that everything's going to work and you're doing it in a low risk way because maybe you have the internal test store and it's kind of a, maybe it's located on premise, maybe it's just a testing lab with just a bunch of cash registers and servers that mimic a store, but you want to make sure that it's going to work before you actually roll it out to the world. And we also know that staging and production, we want it to be as close as possible, so much so that we'll even make sure that we uh, will actually go back and reconcile any sort of database changes and code changes just because we need to make sure that they're as close as possible so we're testing like for like. So knowing that, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be leveraging a feature called tenant tags. So let's go into our library and this is a new option that appears once you add in your first tenant. So let's jump in here and what tenant tag tags do is they allow you to as it says right there on the screen, classify and group tenants. And so what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to call this my, let's call this my Trident deployment process. Uh, you can kind of call it whatever you want. In fact, I'm not really a big fan of that. 
let's call this uh, tenant type. And so this is the tag set that will store what kind of tenant it really is. <laughs> Sounds ominous. Uh, good old Grammarly. Okay, so let's jump in and let's, let's, so with tenant tags, you can make them literally whatever you want them to be, uh, which is nice as, as long as it's just some sort of string. Uh, so in this particular case, I'm actually going to call this a store. I'm going to call this uh, branch type. I think I make that makes more sense. Kind of set this, we'll store what kind of branch it is. Yeah, sure. Me failing English, that's impossible. <laughs> So I'm going to call this a pseudo store and I'm going to give it a nice color of blue. And then you notice it is a uh, hexadecimal so you don't have to use the built-in colors. And then I'm going to say physical if I could spell and I want to give this a color of green. Okay. And so what I'm going to do now is for each of my tenants, I'm going to go in and I'm going to assign it a tenant tag. So I'm going to call this my pseudo store. And then for my other tenants, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to tag them with physical. Reminds me of a very old song from the 80s from Olivia Newton-John by doing this. I'll probably just aged myself immensely by mentioning that, but... <laughs> I don't know why it just popped in. I mean, I know why it popped into my head because the word physical is right in front of me, but I just think that's kind of funny. Anyway, let's now jump over to our deployment process. So one of the things with the deployment process is you cannot target a specific tenant. That's not allowed, um, but you can target tenant tags. So what I mean by this is now a new option has appeared and I can now come in here and I can say only run this for my pseudo tags. In addition, only run this for staging because that's all we need to run it for. And we're going to do the same thing for our database Delta approve it because we only want to run this for our pseudo. Now this is again assuming that we're following all of the rules as established outside of the deployment process, which is that the internal tenant is always going to be deployed first. It's always going to represent, you know, the latest and greatest database changes. And so once we approve it, once everything looks good by say like a DBA, then we should make sure that all of the other stores are consistent. If this isn't the case where it's going to be very, very, very different between each tenant, um, that's much more common with customers who are deploying to their customer's infrastructure, where perhaps they're deploying version three to, let me, let me save this really quick and I'm going to talk about that for just a second. In tenant tag run conditions. Before I forget. So let's talk about this a little bit of why this might not work in other scenarios, but I wanted to show you how you could do it. So let's say hypothetically that each of these stores is a franchisee and it's owned by someone completely different. And before they allow any sort of update, they require sign off. They want to look at everything because they have that written into their uh, franchise contract that they can approve or deny any sort of software changes. Uh, coming down from the main office. Hypothetically, that's probably not going to happen in a franchise or franchisee agreement. That's pretty much one way, but let's say hypothetically that's the case. So NEO1, NEO2, and NEO3 could be on vastly different versions. Right now, everyone's on 2.1, but if we had a situation where, let's say, internal was 3.0, NEO1 was on 1.3, NEO2 was on 2.0, and then NEO3 is on 1.4, then having something like this where I've updated the deployment process to only run steps such as this, like the auto approved Delta script and the database Delta script, that wouldn't work because right now I'm working under the assumption that every single retail store is going to be kept up to date within a reasonable amount of time. Let's say within a few days, everyone's going to have that version deployed to it. And so we can make that assumption that you know, once we approve something in staging, it can go to production. 
again, these are the types of rules that you have to think about when you're doing multi-tenancy, um, especially when you're dealing with different customers and you, how you're deploying your tenants and everything like that. Um, another really good use case for this tenant tag and having different steps uh, scoped to it is you might have a situation where you want to run additional steps on the on the tenant, so maybe you have some custom branding, maybe you need to make some additional custom changes, like they need you to uh, rebuild the database index, or because uh, they don't have the the automated job to do that, or they, they need you to do something additional, that's where these steps can really come into play, and they can really help you out on something like this. But again, the whole point of this is so you can have the same deployment process used for everyone with the ability to turn on and off particular steps depending on certain run conditions. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and let's create a release because I want to show you what this looks like in action. So I'm just going to call this 3.0 once it pops up. You know what, 2.2, just because I feel <laughs> like I'm wasting numbers if you could do such a thing. <laughs> oh, I had a person say, you know, you're wasting a lot of numbers by doing this. I'm like, I, I didn't realize that I had a limit of numbers. <laughs> but anyway, uh, one of the things uh, that you can also do is you can also target specific tenant tags when selecting what you want to deploy. Uh, this is a lot easier in, in a case that, you know, I only have four tenants, so it's not the end of the world. But let's say for right now, I just want to deploy to internal. And But in the next deployment, let's say in just a little bit, I want to deploy to all of my actual physical stores. So instead of having select to select every single physical store, I could come in here, select physical, and then it will automatically pick which tenants match that particular tag. So this is it's another really easy way to kind of lever to kind of group and organize your tenants. Um, I'm, not, I'm actually going to show you one other way that uh, to group and organize your tenants specifically when you're doing deployments. Uh, but before I do that, I want to jump over to variables and I want to take it, let you know that you can also scope variables to tenant tags as well. It doesn't appear here, but if you click on open editor, you can then see the actual tenant tags and this will grow as you know as you add in more and more tenant tags um, if you go right to the editor outside of scoping you can come in here and click on define scope there it is easy peasy nice and easy so tenant tags is one of those really nice things to organize tenants together you can scope variables to it uh, you can scope steps to it uh, you can say hey i want to deploy via this way the next very common way that I see tenant tags used out in the wild is I'm just going to call this release ring. Specifies the, whoa, these cadence. Or when a tenant gets the, or he, the, and greatest code. Okay. I always love to throw in commas when I don't need them, I guess. Okay, so we want to say, uh, I'm going to call you early adopter. I'm going to call you, I'm going to make you as red. Actually, I'm going to make you yellow. Um, I'm going to have another one called edge. Make you red. And then finally have another one called uh, stable. And just make you, I'll make you gray. Just that way we're not uh, mixing up our tenant tags. And I'm gonna go back through and I'm gonna add that to each of our tenants. I'm gonna show you why this is kind of an interesting thing to do on something like this. So this is, oops, not early adopter. I want, yeah, I want you to be edge. And we go back to tenants. And let's say Xarbin, and if you didn't hear my spiel last for the last uh, episode, Xarbin is Nebraska spelled backwards. Uh, it used to be a place where you could go and uh, they had races there, they had rodeos there, they had all kinds of stuff there. I saw ice capades there one year. Um, 
but now it's a it's a shopping center with a really nice park. Okay, and let's say Millard is stable, as is Benson. Okay, so let's jump over. Let's jump back over here. So as we can see, this ran the step and it goes, I'm waiting for approval for the database approval step, which is exactly what we wanted. We had database changes to view. Um, it's the same stuff over and over again, just because I just delete the database every time, about every hour, and it just recreates it. So I can show you <laughs> that this step is actually working. Let's say approved, and then we can pre proceed on happy days. All right, so while we're waiting for that to finish up, I wanted to show you why I made that tenant tag. Because what we can do is there are a few ways you can group. So you can group by channel, which we can see here. So we can see, you know, we have the release channel and that's what's getting deployed out right now. We also have the release ring. And so we can say here, hey, here are the early adopters, here's our edge, and here is our stable release ring. And so what you could do here, what's really nice about this is once something reaches, say, oops, uh, stable, I can come in here and I can say deploy everything to stable all at once. Um, or I want to deploy everything to all my early adopters. It gives me that capability to kind of control when we want to do something like this. And so you could also have, say, early adopters in different regions. You could have early adopters, like maybe a handful of early adopters with everyone else being unstable. It really is up to you on how you want to organize your tenants, but it's a nice, easy way to kind of control how you want to release code out into the wild. Uh, verify LGM, LGTM. And then we'll proceed on. So yeah, so this is how to leverage tenant tags to better organize and group your tenants together, as well as how to use those tenant tags to scope your tenants, excuse me, how to scope steps to particular tenants. Um, it's not just limited to deployment processes, as we saw here. We also have the capability to scope steps to tenant tags here as well, if we so decide to. So maybe uh, release ring, maybe early adopters, they get additional database stuff, additional database logging, uh, whatever the case may be. There's a whole host of reasons why someone would do something like that. Um, but there, it is really up to you on how you want to do it. But uh, I hopefully you found this useful on how to leverage tenant tags and how to group and organize your tenants. Uh, thank you very much for watching this week's episode and have a great rest of your day.